We have a ton of Nintendo-related news we need to provide useful information on, including Nintendo's next big release, the future of Super Smash Bros., award shows, and so much more. Remember to pull on a chair and sit right there as I tell you how this news became the Prince of Con Air. Um, jeez. Did I really just mix French Prince with Nicolas Cage? You guys have seen Con Air, right? Wow, oh, jeez. Who does that? First up, it happened again. That's right, this keeps happening, and it's become almost embarrassing at this point. But for us gamers, it's frustrating too. Another Switch game has leaked online just days before release. Super Mario RPG, the remastered, remade, whatever you want to call it, that old Super Nintendo game coming back to Switch is now widely and honestly quite easily findable online. The ROM has spread to the every corner of the internet, and that means, of course, I need to warn you about spoilers. It does feel weird providing a spoiler warning for a remastered game that's technically been out for 27 years and has entire 100% complete video and walkthrough guides all over the internet. But reality is that once games like this leak, it's possible in places like the For You section of X, uh, random content suggestion feeds like the YouTube homepage, Shorts, and TikTok, you may indeed see content for the game crop up. This could be a huge spoiler for many like me who never played the original. And I know, get your booze out of the way now. <laughs> I will be picking up the game this month, along with Hogwarts Legacy. I just am not sure which platform I'm getting Hogwarts on just yet. Hogwarts Legacy finally gave us an official gameplay reveal with the Magic Awaits trailer, and it honestly looks fine. I mean, my expectations were for the game to look extremely blurry, have almost all of its effects ripped out, and run something at like 10 FPS, but that's because I am extremely low with expectations for ports of third-party games, especially when it's a first-time release from a studio on Switch. Look, I trust the people that port games like Wolfenstein and Doom to do a pretty decent job, and even the team that helped with The Witcher 3, but the last time we had a first-time AAA port job, that was the GTA Trilogy. And the GTA Trilogy Remastered, sorry, let's get it right, Grand Theft Auto, and yeah, that was a hot mess. Needless to say, I half expected them to, at the last moment, maybe pull the rug out from under us and give us a streamed version of Hogwarts Legacy that runs about as well as the Kingdom Hearts games on Switch. What happened? What happened? <laughs> Instead, they stuck true to their public word, at least from what we can see so far, and it appears to be a very well done port. Then again, this is a trailer that is intended to make the game look good, and this is why I'm going to be waiting until we get a more technical analysis, maybe from places like Digital Foundry. As a Harry Potter fan, I put off getting the game earlier this year, hoping to support the Nintendo Switch version if it got a quality port job. So I am less concerned review-wise on if the game is good. We already know that it is. I just need to know it's good from a technical standpoint. And yeah, the frame rate in particular, we need just need to make sure that there's not a bunch of texture bugs and other weird things that are going on. I'm fine with 25 to 30 FPS experiences on Switch, even though I know I can get better elsewhere, such as my PlayStation 5, but I find it fundamental to support these games when doing the best they possibly can and delivering a quality port, just so I can help encourage them to support Nintendo's next platform. Speaking of supporting the next generation platform from Nintendo, one of the many mysteries heading into the generation is the future of Super Smash Bros. Well, I think they may go an entire generation with an ultimate port with all the DLC included and maybe a new Fighter's Pass. You know, kind of similar to what they did with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe on Switch. It's undeniable there will be a new Super Smash Bros. game someday. One aspect many people loved from games in the past, one in particular, Hello Brawl, was a much more in-depth story mode with full cutscenes. We know Sakurai was pretty upset when those cutscenes got posted online, but he recently revisited the topic in one of his YouTube videos. Oh, 
If you would subscribe to the channel, by the way, that would sure be swell. Heck, I'd love if you would drop a like on the video too. It helps us reach our goals long haul to hand out free cookies to every subscriber, even if it's just the crumbs left over from when my kids have Oreos. Anyways, it's back to the Smash News. Now look, this is an important topic for Smash Bros, because one of the main things a new game could do is give us a really in-depth story mode with full cutscenes. It is literally one of our favorite things from prior Smash games. Sakurai, though, indicates it wasn't just him, but the entire team that feared the cutscenes leaking, either before release or even the same day. Sakurai was apparently all for the CGI cutscenes in the game, but he thinks leaks ruin the surprise. He goes on to detail that social media is bad for story-driven games due to how leaks of the story spread. I do appreciate his mindset, but I hope he decides one day to rethink the process on this. Tears of the Kingdom had a ton of cutscenes, so does Spider-Man 2 and pretty much all of Sony's IPs because they are heavily story-driven, and heavy story-driven games with CGI or even in-game based cutscenes are massively popular among video game fans. So sure, they're all going to leak eventually and people will compile all the cutscenes together for a quote-unquote video game movie, but that doesn't detract from the fact that I think a majority of us enjoy that stuff after we experience the said cutscenes in the game for ourselves. I think it's something that's holding the potential of a single player mode in Smash Bros. back from its full potential. So I really hope he rethinks this with a new direction for the series moving forward. Now next up, it's award season, and first, we gotta consider the major awards. And one of them has arrived. And we know when the nominees for Jeff Keighley's awards are being announced as well. Now, look, if I'm not up for Gaming Content Creator of the Year, Jeff, then what the hell am I co-streaming your event for? The show itself? Actually caring who wins? The epic music montage before Goaty is announced? Okay. <laughs> On a more serious note, the Golden Joystick Awards 2023 announced all of their winners, and it's kind of a strange list. Remember, Nintendo has two of the top-rated games of the year, and Spider-Man 2 is one of the best PlayStation games of the year to boot. Keep that in mind before I go over some quick winners, and I'll explain how they do these awards, because context matters. Let's go by name. Baldur's Gate 3 won the following categories. Best Storytelling, Best Visual Design, It's Studio won Studio of the Year, Best Game Community, Best Supporting Performer, PC Game of the Year, and Ultimate Game of the Year. It won every category it was up for, including most posts on Games Radar Plus in 2023. Yes, I just made that up, but it's a true fact. The people who actually host the awards. For those unaware, Games Radar's Community Awards, which is what this really is, is a fan voted save one singular category. There's nothing wrong with this, but did you know that you could vote? Did anyone outside of their community know? Of course not. Now, I don't really mind Baldur's Gate 3 sweeping. It is an amazing game, and I'm actually enjoying it on PC. It's that context of the awards isn't readily apparent. Games Radar has been posting a lot about the game, in part because they love the game, but also they are ranking well in Google search engine optimization for Baldur's Gate 3, which is exactly how websites like Games Radar get their traffic. And they rank very well for many of the biggest search terms for the game. As such, they are posting a lot of things that target those search terms, such as different character builds, and giving them a massive audience for that singular game. They do post about all of gaming, of course, uh, but yeah, like 27 of their last 60 posts on the website were about Baldur's Gate 3. Only six dealt with the whole of Nintendo. I reference this because Nintendo won a singular award. Best Nintendo game, Tears of the Kingdom. That's it. And heck, you know this is a community bias, which, yeah, we're all biased, because their Critics' Choice Award went to Alan Wake 2 meaning their own staff think Alan Wake 2 is Game of the Year, not Baldur's Gate 3 or Tears of the Kingdom. Also, Alan Wake 2 as a choice is interesting since it came out recently, while games like Spider-Man 2 were not part of the awards at all, meaning the best PlayStation game went to a remake in Resident Evil 4. Now look, that's one hell of a game to be sure, but it's not even a new game. Starfield won best Xbox game for those curious. 
a while back when discussing Jeff Keighley's Game Awards, a lot of people told me that things should be decided by nothing but fan votes. But this is where the problem lies. When it's fan votes, how do you get a wide enough variety of gaming fans together to come up with a definitive winner in all these categories? You just simply won't. I don't care that Tears of the Kingdom wasn't the game of the year, but it, it had no wins in any other category. Mario Wonder didn't have a win at all. No love for Hi-Fi Rush, arguably the best Xbox exclusive game of the year. This is why I'm not a fan of popular vote awards. It's always catered towards one specific community, and this year, that community is the one driving traffic to their website. It's like if I ran awards for all of gaming on my YouTube channel, and Nintendo games sweep all the awards. It's not really fair. But we do have an update on what is widely considered the biggest critics award show in Jeff Keighley's Game Awards, where 90% of every category is based on a panel of critics from different outlets, and then 10% is a fan vote. So the fan vote really only matters if the vote is about 50-50 from the critics. He is announcing the nominees for every category this upcoming Monday at 11 a.m. Central Time. And no, critic-based award shows aren't perfect either. There is no perfect way to do awards. This is why, while we may cover this stuff, because it's fun to talk about, remember, folks, that no matter what happens... None of us need vindication with awards to companies that literally have no impact on our ability to enjoy video games. Whatever your personal favorite game of the year is, is entirely valid to you. Nobody can take that away. Lastly, I just want to give a small update on Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. The DLC has been out for a couple of days, but I wanted to highlight other changes people have realized since the 3.0.0 update dropped. First, there is a bunch of changes to invincibility values, and here they are on screen. Look, I'm not going to say I've ever really fully understood all of these, so I'm not going to pretend I do now, but we will have a link down to this stuff in the description. But we do know what they based the new characters on, however. Diddy Kong uses stats from Cat Peach, Inkling Girl, and the female villager with a medium-sized cart. Funky Kong is based on stats from Wario, Dry Bowser, and Heavy Me with a large vehicle. Pauline is based on Rosalina, King Boo, and Link with a large vehicle. And lastly, Peachette shares stats with Peach, Daisy, Birdo, and Yoshi with a medium-sized cart. In the end, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe for my money is the best Mario Kart has ever been, and I'm only left wondering how they possibly follow this up with the sheer amount of content. Remember, this game has been expanded twice. Mario Kart 8 came out on Wii U with roughly the same amount of content as Mario Kart 7, but then they had DLC that doubled the content for just $20. Then they did it again on Switch, this time doubling the content of Deluxe for $25. What will the next Mario Kart bring? I guess we'll just have to wait and see on Nintendo's next system. Hey, speaking of their next system, there's some weird shenanigans going around in the patent universe. Now, I've talked about patents that have been released by Nintendo publicly, and Furukawa basically backed this up during the investors meeting, don't signify products Nintendo intends to release. However, the exact language said that public patents means it's an idea they aren't using as is. We have to keep that language in mind because that doesn't mean that aspects or concepts simply weren't found to be used in a different way for the future. So when we think of, say, the hall sensing control stick patent from earlier this year that used a liquid, no, there will not be a hall sensing stick designed that way with a liquid in their next controllers for Switch 2. But does that mean there won't be using different hall sensing technology? Maybe one that's more durable and not reliant on a liquid that could leak? Again, hard to know until it's announced, but certainly it was nice to see them looking into better control sticks, showing they are aware they can't repeat the drift issues of Joy-Cons today. Then there was a dual screen patent, the exact one for Akawa reference, and the one he said as is on. So does that mean there might be two screens, but it's not a hinge design? Would it possibly be detachable? An optional accessory? Maybe one they sell for people who want DS and 3DS Nintendo Switch Online games in a more easy fashion. We have seen fan designs showing sliding screens and even foldable designs where it's all one continuous screen. Who knows if that patent becomes anything else. But that's why patents can still be fun to discuss alternatives to what is shown. 
Recently, there was a Joy-Con related patent that talked about motion controls with a camera that hooked up to the dock. And obviously, this exact method isn't being used. Hence why the patent is public. But it does mean they may be looking into a higher quality motion controls and possibly some sort of camera tracking. Maybe for, I don't know, alternate reality or virtual reality purposes. Now, it could be an accessory, maybe something that's sold in the virtual reality package like the VR2 for PlayStation 5. It could also just be turned into the often talked about idea of a camera being included on the Switch 2 itself, mostly for augmented reality purposes. In the end, we don't know, but it is something that exists. Also, an update occurred to Nintendo's machine learning patent. That's all about enhancing images on a screen. We are fairly confident Nintendo will be taking advantage of NVIDIA's deep learning super sampling upscaling technology, but what if that isn't where Nintendo wants to stop? There are other methods used out there using AI and machine learning. You know, we have checkerboarding, that was a popular method and still used in some games today. And there are other technologies like AMD's FSR, something Nintendo does have experience with on Switch. It's possible they are designing their own custom image scaler built right into the platform before DLSS even comes into play. This may help depending on how it's designed. Of course, this exact patent won't be used, but there is likely a machine learning concept behind the scenes that as parts of it become obsolete, they just update the current patent with those parts. The fact the patent keeps getting updated with things they aren't going to use tells you that they are obviously continuing to work on some sort of in-house machine learning image upscaler. How it may work in conjunction with DLSS is unknown, or maybe if it works even better maybe it never comes out. But it's fun paying some attention to what Nintendo is working on at least. Now, that's gonna do it for today's episode of, well, okay, not really prime news. I'm not on camera like usual. I know, weird, but I am present and I am giving you all the latest on the Nintendo universe. Stay tuned for all the latest news on Nintendo, their announced and rumored games, and for all the latest on Nintendo's next generation system. See you in the next video.